So, it has been four years since Video Game Bunker officially ended. And the first episode was uploaded about four years before that. Now I feel like I can look back on the series with a solid sense of perspective. Admittedly, I wasn't 100% sure what I wanted to do with it when I first started. I kind of had some mythology planned out, and the idea was that you would experience small bits and pieces of it intermixed with the reviews as references that would seem like throwaway jokes, but they would have a coherent internal logic, and tell this whole separate story as long as you're paying attention, almost like you're receiving these broadcasts from the future or some alternate reality. I filmed it on a webcam because that was literally the only camera I had, but I think it helped add to the gritty post-apocalyptic theme of everything. I like to imagine if I had more time and resources, I could have made something bigger out of it, but for now, it's just going to remain as it was. A short series that I used as an experiment in combining a world-building narrative with video game reviews and analysis. That said, there are a few parts of the series that I'm actually quite proud of. So as a way of paying tribute to my channel's humble roots, I'd like to count down my top 10 video game bunker moments. Number 10. The Chrono Trigger Rick Roll. But if Sega could put together such great music for the Sonic games, why couldn't anyone else on the system? I actually play Chrono Trigger until about 2009, but when I first heard Robo's theme, Rick Astley was what immediately came to mind. Admittedly, I wasn't the first person to make this comparison, and I never claimed to be, but just the fact that it comes out of nowhere is something I really like. Just that bit of a lead up to it when I play Robo's theme and the viewer goes, wait, what? Wasn't Chrono Trigger an SNES exclusive? What did that song sound like on the jet? Oh, okay. I received comments from people who said they laughed their ass off at this, which is always a great compliment. I love it when I can make someone legitimately laugh out loud with something I've written. Number 9 I'm not saying this conversation is a direct quote between me and my older brother, but it's exactly how something like that would have gone down. So is Tarnas about to take out the trash in this week? Hey, hey, pause the game real quick. No, I wanted to do the end spade. Dude, pause! No, you're just gonna have to hurry. Go do the trashes. Yeah, it, pause the game! I said I want the trashes done now! I almost get PTSD just thinking about it, and I like to imagine a lot of younger siblings experience the exact same thing. In the grand scheme of things, it really doesn't matter. It's just a game, but it's just so petty. I feel like I capture the mood and frustration pretty well with it. It's just a microcosm of everything older brothers do to put their younger brothers through hell, even when playing a video game together. Number 8 The Password from Wall Street, Kid I remember trying to use this password system as a kid, and it really is as unwieldy and awkward as it looks. So I guess it's time to enter a password and try again, but OH MY GOD MY EYES! Look at the size of this fucking password! I never really had a problem with passwords, but look at this beast! The entire alphabet, every number from 0 to 9, and 3 symbols, and if that wasn't enough, they added the entire alphabet again as black letters on a white background for a grand total of 65 possible characters and 52 digits in the passwords. If you do the math, that's 65 to the power of 52, or 1.86 untrigentillion combinations! I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that correctly! With the possible exception of Golden Sun, this remains the most insane password I have ever seen in a video game. And at least in that one, you have the option of using a link cable. I don't have much to say about this, but I just love the delivery of the whole section. Just how bewildered and incredulous it seems. 
Of course, that was also the first time I learned the word untrigentillion, so I always like being able to expand my vocabulary. Number 7. The whole game is based on secrets, but there's a difference between secret and just fucking impossible! Impossible? My mother can beat this game! In fact, it's one of the only NES games she still plays 20 years after its original release, as seen in this archival footage. Yep, that's my mother, and yep, she can beat Mylon's Secret Castle. These days, she mostly plays Facebook stuff, but someone once commented that they thought I was joking when I claimed my mother can beat the game, and then laughed out loud when I actually showed it. And that's exactly what I was going for with the joke, so I'm so happy it landed as well as it did. I had this idea that Zero's mother would sort of be a recurring character cutting in through old archival footage, and he would have an extensive amount of video clips he can use, and this was just the first really big use of that. It's also a bit of a look into the overall lore, the idea that Zero was around before the console wars and could sort of use old footage to remind himself and others what things were like before the Cataclysm. Number 6 He can even travel through walls! He's a fucking poltergeist! Hey there, ah! what's going on? What are you doing? The hell are you doing here? And why do you have a British accent? Mobius is right underneath England, didn't you know? Well, how come nobody's found it? No, 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 the entrance is in Wales. Oh, okay. Although, you know, I was born under Norfolk. I guess that explained the two tails. Ooh, get, hey, what are you doing? Get, get, no, get out, get out. Am I on it? No, no, out, get out. Hey, honey, hey, listen to <laughs> Tales Invading the Bunker. I'm really kind of surprised this one is so low on the list. There are so many quick jokes in such a small period of time, and there's a lot of little touches that I love. My favorite is probably the white box that appears around Tails when he gets shot. It's a reference to exactly how light guns worked in Duck Hunt, and of course Commander Odo picking him up afterward, which continues to be my channel avatar to this day. Throwing the pills away at the end is sort of a cliche, but I felt like it made sense in context, since we've never really seen anything quite this crazy in the show before. I've always been toying with the concept that Zero is slowly going insane after being cooped up in the bunker with nobody to talk to, so the idea of funny hallucinations just stuck out to me. Tails is voiced by my friend Oi, who has been a recurring feature of this channel, which led to the whole lampshading of why he has a British accent. Mobius is right underneath England, didn't you know? Well, how come nobody's found it? He basically co-wrote Tails' line, so that part about Wales and Norfolk were pretty much all him. The joke, of course, being that people care so little about Wales, they could literally have an interdimensional portal in their country and nobody would notice. And Norfolk is sort of the Alabama of England, so having a deformed inbred fox with two tails just makes sense. He even threw in some references to the Sonic animated series and Ocarina of Time. Hey, Jenny! <laughs> hey, listen to- if this is your first time realizing these jokes, that's probably why it's so low on the list. I feel like I could have delivered the lines better, but hey, I'd never done an effect like that before. It was a learning experience. Number 5 Critical Marine has always been an ally of the show, so I was really happy I was finally able to use him in the scene. Gentlemen, this is the reason why I've called you today. This is our target. He identifies himself only as Zero. For the past 12 months, he's been broadcasting from an undisclosed underground location known only as the Video Game Bunker. All efforts to trace the source of the broadcast has failed, as he seems to be using some sort of advanced encryption and scrambling technology. In the past, he has shown himself to be a conscientious ally Tearing down such targets as Dr. Hedgehog, Castlevania, and Twisted Metal. However, things have begun to escalate. As you may remember from May of last year, he voiced his support for the most wretched thing to ever be spewed out of the bowels of a Nintendo boardroom, Super Mario Brothers the movie. In response, we have raised the price on his head to 640,000 Microsoft points for anyone who can bring in the trailer live. Unfortunately, our efforts have proven unsuccessful, and the reward remains unclaimed. However, while he has been a little more than a mild nuisance, his most grievous crime was just committed today. As we were forced to watch helplessly, 
as he publicly denounced the proven fact that Halo is the greatest game series ever created. While we used to think that his broadcast was somewhat entertaining, as he bashed terrible Wii and PlayStation games, his most recent efforts have gone too far. We will not let these crimes stand. We will not rest until Zero is brought in and put on trial. He hides in a hole because he's afraid. He keeps his identity secret because he's a coward. We are the Microsoft Army. And Zero is nothing. He really went above and beyond to give me some amazing footage here. I had designed logos for the other factions, but the Microsoft Army was the only one I got to use, and he actually had it printed onto a helmet to use in his costume, which came out looking so good. I was planning on a bigger confrontation at some point, probably as a Season 2 finale, but unfortunately it never came to fruition. It would have been nice to work with him again. The main point, beyond expanding the lore of the Bunkerverse, was just sort of a stab at those really fickle fans who were like, I liked you when you made fun of stuff I hated, but then you made fun of something I liked, so you suck now. You know the type. I had to do some creative editing to hide a few jump cuts, but you can barely notice them unless you're looking for them. I think it came out looking great. Number 4 This was the debut of Season 2, and I really think it helped cement the concept I was going for with the show. Gaming. Gaming never changes. Since the dawn of the Electric Age, when the forefathers first discovered the entertaining power of bits and pixels. Feuds have been waged about everything from graphics to control schemes to pure processing power. Often this was fairly benign, simple skirmishes and arguments. But in the early 21st century, the violent nature of gamers could contain themselves no longer. Nuclear launch detected. We don't know who launched the first attack, the Brotherhood of Sony, the Microsoft Army, or Mario's children, but we do know the result. A worldwide cataclysm. It swept across the land, cutting down hardcore and casual gamers alike. The jewel players and WoW players buried alongside each other in mass graves. Those who refused to join sides were exiled, forced to live underground. One man dares to continue to speak his mind. Though keeping his identity secret, he puts his life on the line to broadcast from his undisclosed location deep beneath the earth, where he can combat the propaganda spread by the fanboy factions, unclouded by nostalgia, loyalty, or prejudice. For gamers had succeeded in destroying the world, but gaming, gaming never changes. The speech is obviously a parody of the opening monologue of Fallout 3, which is also one of the main inspirations for the series in general. I still get chills from this part. Nuclear launch detected. Which really is the premise of the show in a nutshell. What if the console wars were literal war that went nuclear? It's this strange mixture of absurd and disturbing that I've been trying to capture from the beginning, and I think this is the first time I really managed to nail it. Number 3. I have actually been quoted on this line, which is just surreal. Violent video games, like movies, TV shows, books, and music, are the result of the society that spawned them. The world isn't violent because of video games. Video games are violent because of the world. OBEY! Games like Ethnic Cleansing exist as a result of white supremacy, which in turn stems from the deep-seated ethnocentrism and the desire for hegemony. Even if you were to prevent a game like this from being created, or suppress it from getting into the hands of people who might play it, doesn't change the fact that there do exist people in this world who choose violence to solve their problems. For decades, psychologists have been trying desperately to understand the human psyche and what makes a person dangerous, and we still barely scratch the surface. The human mind is more complex than anybody could ever imagine, and to think that a simple interactive medium is the source of everything wrong in the world is laughable at best. I was googling it a few years ago, and there have been several places it shows up, none of which are sites I've ever visited. 
they don't attribute it to me, unfortunately, but it does feel great that my most popular episode contains something that I really do feel strongly about, and I feel like this entire section just sums up my thoughts on the whole debate very succinctly. I made this over eight years ago, and with the frankly horrifying increase in school shootings over the last few years, it's kind of scary how relevant it continues to be. Number two. Let me tell you about somebody you may have heard of. A man who has always been there for me when I really needed him. A man who started out as a humble carpenter, and later became one of the most recognizable faces in the entire world. A man who could perform feats others could only dream of, including coming back from the dead. And while many may say he has become less and less relevant in recent years, he continues to bring joy and happiness into the lives of his true supporters. A man who has selflessly conquered evil time and time again, and will continue to do so until the end of time. That man's name is Mario. What, who did you think I was talking about, Luigi? I think the best thing about this joke is that everything is 100% true. Mario did start out as a carpenter in Donkey Kong, and he's one of the most recognizable faces in the world. I don't think I'm the first person to point out the parallels between Mario and Jesus, but I'm pretty sure I noticed them on my own without seeing anyone else's list first. So I like to think this joke is 100% mine, at least this particular version of it. Of course, it's fairly easy to find similarities between any two people, real or fictional, and it's played for laughs with a bait and switch, but I just like the solemn delivery of it. Admittedly, the punchline could be better, but it was only my second episode. It feels a little weird saying this, but video games really are sort of a religion for me. Some people have Bible quotes that inspire them. I have video game shit. And my number one favorite video game bunker moment is... Commander Odo. <laughs> How could it be anything else? This is my channel's mascot. Commander Odo was a gift from a female classmate when I was in college, and I have cherished him ever since. I had been running a GeoCities blog just as a way to kill time, and I had put up a small list of things I liked, like RPGs, time travel movies, dragons, and walruses. I don't know why, I just think they're cool. But for whatever reason, she actually read my blog, and on my birthday, she came up to me and gave me the stuffed walrus. I was just shocked. I had never expected anybody to not only read my blog, but use it to find something that I would enjoy as a small gift. He used to talk, you squeeze him and he says stuff like, I'm a walrus, my tusks help pull me onto ice and rocks. I think it was from a SeaWorld gift shop. It doesn't work anymore, that's like 10 years ago, and there's no zipper in here so I can't replace the batteries or anything. But contrary to popular belief, the name Commander Odo isn't a reference to Deep Space Nine. I've never actually seen the show. It comes from a completely separate franchise that I had this idea for about a superhero walrus, shut up, named Commander Benjamin Odo. So when I introduced him in the show during the Arctic Tale episode, it just felt like the perfect name. He is by far my favorite character, and I have received fan art of him from some viewers, which is so cool. In the Arctic Tale script, I did actually write lines for Odo even though he never talks, and Zero responds in such a way that you're only getting one half of the conversation. I didn't want to make it like R2-D2 or Chewbacca where they have to sort of translate without actually translating. Like, what secret mission? What are you talking about? So it's a bit more like Wilson from Castaway. Beyond that, I do think Arctic Tale is one of the funniest videos I've done, and for whatever reason, it's one of my most popular episodes, so I have no problem keeping Commander Odo around for the foreseeable future. So with that said, do I ever plan on bringing back Video Game Bunker? Maybe. I do have some ideas where I want to take it, but that's all they are right now, ideas. If I were to do it, I would want to do it right, and at this point, I'm perfectly happy keeping this show as is. I have the freedom to do whatever I want, and I don't think adding an overarching narrative is really important at this point in time. I'm just here to have fun. I do want to experiment with more dramatic or story-based videos in the future, but again, that's something for another time. Leave a comment below with some of your favorite moments, and as always everybody, have fun!